Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, Sacred Geography, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Friday, November 18th, 8.30 p.m. Mountain Time, 2022. Holy macaroni! Hamburg, New York, live. The snow is piling up, over five feet of snow and counting. In fact, the record's been broken. The most snow ever to fall in New York State in a 24-hour period, 50 inches back in 1966, has been obliterated. That's in Camden, New York. Over 66 inches has now fallen in Orchard Hill. More than five feet of snow has fallen in New York snowstorm, and two people have died while clearing paths in Erie. Keep calm. It's boom time. This, we can't even make this up. It's deep and people continue to try to drive in this debacle that is currently unfolding. This is the Al Gore edition. Shut up, Al, get in your hole. And for good reason. Take a look at some of these snow totals. Um, but they are completely covered in snow. You can tell uh, this is going to take a really long time for people to shovel out of this. This is wet, heavy snow. It's dangerous, honestly, to shovel snow like this all at once. So I think a lot of people are deciding to wait it out. Um, and Not only that, there's more bands coming in in this region. This was just a lull in the activity for the next 12 hours. It's boom time. And here we have the live stream from Reed Timmer. In Hamburg, as those snow bands continue to pick up, and this has increased by about six or eight inches since we began setting up the video about an hour ago. So heavy snow is still falling in the region, and it is life-threatening. Here are the latest snow totals. Now, if you're in the Niagara and Orleans area, almost no snow, two, three, four inches tops. Buffalo area Darien Center picked up 28.3 inches. More snow is still falling. These are just totals from about five hours ago. The Buffalo Airport had 12.9 inches. Batavia, 12. Corufu, 10.5. Stanford, 10. Now take a look at the South Towns. Orchard Park, 66 inches, obliterating that 50-inch record by 16 inches. Hamburg, 51 inches. Elma, 48. East Aurora, 43.7 these totals are, most of them are record breaking. And the snow is continuing to fall, and several more feet are predicted over the coming 48 hours. So this is not over for you, Buffalo. It's only just beginning. And let's take a look. You can see those lake effect bands through Saturday and Sunday continue to increase in the two main lake effect regions. So heads up, Michigan should be picking up snow the whole time due to this lake effect. Let's just light this up. The snow is going to gradually increase and then move into the west sometime towards the end of the month where heavy snow is going to pick up in British Columbia and make its way down the spine of the Sierras and into the Rocky Mountains in the first week of December. This will be a December to remember after the record snowfall already impacting. Now let's take a look at this. These lake effect regions are predicting over four feet more of snow in the Buffalo region in the next week or so. So this is ongoing. They already got five or six feet. Put another four feet on that. They'll have 10 feet of snow before December. Holy macaroni. Sorry about that little glitch in the matrix. Even more heavy snow for the Great Lakes. Santa Ana winds and critical fire weather in Southern California. Periods of heavy snow will add to an already deep snow cover. Hello, 66 inches in many locations downwind of the Great Lakes. A wintry mix is impacting parts of West Texas into New Mexico. Powerful Santa Ana winds will produce critical fire weather threats in Southern California. Click on your county. For more watches and warnings, you can see all the lake effect warnings up in Michigan, up along the lakes here, and they have some green warnings. That's for potentially freezing fog or lake effect snow. Yeah, it's going to be lake effect snow in all of those regions. So please, if you don't have to, why would you go out in anything like this? It's anyone's guess. Seismic update, no quakes and note, most recent rumbler here in the Philippines. We had some big rockers earlier today. Not even a tsunami warning from a 6.9 in Indonesia offshore. Holy macaroni. Hawaii is still rumbling. We're waiting for, well, Mauna Loa to blow up. 
but that is still not in the cards. 5.0 happening in Camp Chocta, right near the volcanic regions. So we could be see, seeing some activity emanating from there in the near future. Worldwide Volcano News Update. Not much going on here. We've got Fuego, Reventador, and many others. Popo, Ducono, Sungay. But Ibico is back in the news. Explosive activity continuing with a puff to 11,000 feet. So Ibico is back in the picture. Nothing significant. Space weather news update. The sun is miraculously blank and quiet during solar max, but we do have to worry about this coronal hole stream. Massive coronal hole. Good trigger. Well, they only trigger large earthquakes when they're more equatorial, but this could trigger a large earthquake up to 7 magnitude, 7, 7.5 in the next 48 hours. So we'll keep a close eye on that as we keep a close eye on the three-day geomagnetic forecast where we're forecast and potentially get to KP5 here for about 12 hours, hours of powers. And this is overnight from the 19th to the 20th. This could be minor perturbations and some disruptions to communication, but nothing that spectacular. Now, how were the bluffs of Southeast Minnesota formed? Say it ain't soda, but this is actually from the river level being somewhere up here, maybe 80 feet higher. And this graphic is pretty spectacular. Now, what it's going to show us is the actual 3D image of the cutout from the glacial flood that came through here just about 12,000 years ago. Now, the current river is just this tiny wet spot in the middle here. But at one point, the river was hundreds of feet higher and raging down, creating these bluffs. And nothing like that has happened since the beginning of the Holocene. And what we're talking about here is the Younger Dryas event. So anytime you're in Minnesota and you want to know how the bluffs were formed, they were formed rapidly in a glacial, catastrophic glacial outwash that pretty much eliminated all of the people living in this area. Now, some really bizarre news, almost alien. A large flock of sheep has been walking in a circle for 12 days without stopping in China. I wonder if this music is copyright. So the phenomenon is completely unexplained. The circle is perfectly circular and the sheep, well, they just keep walking in a circle. Absolutely bizarro. And why this won't parse is anyone's guess. But nonetheless, the great sheep mystery. Hundreds of sheep walk in a circle for over 10 days in North China's Inner Mongolia. The sheep are healthy, and the reason for the weird behavior is a mystery. Or maybe it's not. Could this be a black hole? Shut up, Al! He said, yeah, it's a black hole. There could be something big living deep beneath the Antarctic ice. Now, Antarctica is one of the most extreme environments, but new revelations are coming to the forefront. Many of us think of the continent as a vast white wasteland, but what they discovered underneath of the ice is mind-blowing. Blooms of photosynthetic algae have been observed underneath the ice in these regions. And as soon as the ice melts, but until recently, it was often assumed that the packed sea ice prevented any light from reaching the layers beneath. But that couldn't be further from the truth. New research suggests that blooms of photosynthetic algae called phytoplankton are growing and even thriving before the ice retreats under the ice. Now, this phytoplankton forms the basis for most aquatic food, meaning there could be sea monsters lurking beneath Antarctica using the warmth of the subglacial and subsurface volcanic eruptions as heat and the phytoplankton as food. Now, the Loch Ness Monster might be true. What say you? Shanghai Tengang, the world's biggest sinkhole. I'm not making this up. It was only discovered by the outside world in 1994, and experts still aren't sure how it formed. But they know, based on the geology here, it formed over the last 128,000 years. As water seeping into underground rivers slowly carved the surrounding limestone. But one thing is for certain, measuring 660 meters deep with a volume of 130 million cubic meters, China's Zhaohai Tanking is both the deepest and largest sinkhole in the world. And not only that, at the bottom of this big hole 
is a completely unique biome, independent of the surrounding forest. And this heavenly pit, well, is one for the record books. All links will be below. Now the White House announces a $13 billion funding to modernize power grids. Well, it's about time. They must have got the memo, didn't they? Now, this may add insult to injury because while they are modernizing the power grids, they very well may just go down. New confirmation coming from Nord Stream as leaks confirmed sabotage. Now, they've got some explosive material and they're now studying it. So soon we will find out who maybe the saboteur was. What say you on that topic? This is leading to power outages and shortages over here. Take a look. Over the winter, United States at risk of tight electric supplies this winter, as well as European and other countries all around the world. This has to do with, well, Agenda 2030, the Green New Deal, and another dump that they are implementing to simply starve us out and make us more compliant as the slaves we already are. Now take a look at this. Eggs are going to be rationed across the UK until spring of 2023. Supermarkets, including Tesco, Asda, and Little, are taking urgent action. So, why do you think we have chickens? Why do you think we're self-sufficient and we grow our own food? Why do you think we have that ability? Because we knew things like this were looming in the future, and the future is now. So, please take heed. This is just the beginning of food shortages and do what you can to secure a local food source where you can get eggs, meat, and other products. Now, did an asteroid impact cause an ancient tsunami? I think so. In fact, that tsunami happened about 5,000 years ago, 2807 BC to be exact, and mega tsunamis following the meteor impact in the Indian Ocean wreaked havoc on Madagascar and Western Australia and other regions. And if you join us tomorrow on the radio show at 12 noon Mountain Time, 2 p.m. Eastern on revolutionradio.com, Studio B, Freedom Slips, you will hear about the Burkle Crater and the flood of 2807 B.C. The mega tsunami of the world ocean. Did they occur in the recent past? Well, yes, they did. And if you don't catch the radio show tomorrow... I'm going to upload this uh, tomorrow night while we're in Crestone. And we're going to Crestone for the Thanksgiving potluck. This is November 20th, one of the largest Thanksgiving dinners in the middle of nowhere that costs nothing. If you want to help out, give a hand. You can become, well, a volunteer. You can even donate a turkey. Just call Nick at 917-588-6421. Join us in Crestone on Sunday all day from noon to 5 where we feed hundreds and hundreds of people free food, the biggest potluck you will ever experience in your life. Not only that, Winterfest is going on from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. in the parking lot of the T Road Brewing Company, where Leah will be selling her jewelry, and I will be there with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project tent with Gremlin and Halo and tons and tons of free cannabis to give away to the public because that's the way we give back in a big way. Abundance is the key and that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Hope you got something out of the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Become a Patreon. Support the work we do. We love you. Be safe. And we'll see you in Cresto. Mm -hmm.